Hey guys, this is John Galloway from Jacksonville University. I'm excited to be a part of Coaching Through Cancellation. I know this is a really unique time for a lot of us. I'm um, just, just proud for our staff to be able to share some of our favorite drills and skills with you guys over the next few days. And uh, today I'm going to speak on our, our B52 mindset. And Hopefully I'm speaking to a lot of the coaches out there, uh, the opportunity to be able to give you a different outlook on uh, some ways that you can practice, the, the tempo in which you practice, and certainly the way that we try to transition from defense to offense and vice versa. So the B52 mindset was, was born this year, uh, a concept that we created to try to speed up the game, especially with the shot clock. Uh, we've taken uh, advantage of some opportunities that might not have been presented that in the past and uh, we think it's it's been pretty something pretty special for us I know our guys like it I know uh, it's given us some some opportunities against some high level opponents that maybe have not been there in the past so looking forward to sharing this with you uh, hopefully the, the video will help you as well as some of the the slides to just detail why we do it when we do it how we do it and, and then the drills that we've implemented to make sure it works so look forward to it look forward to answering any questions on the road my contact information will be at the end of the presentation and hopefully you guys take advantage Okay, so the B-52 mindset, you know, bombs away is the, is the idea it came from. You know, we wanted to do a better job, you know, it's specifically coming out of the box and, and what, our, what our team looked like from defensively clearing the ball to offensively playing six on six. And, and those 20 to 30 seconds in between the tempo that we played, we felt like wasn't at, at a high enough rate. Uh, to be able to be successful in the shot clock era. So we came up with the B-52 mindset to really encourage our guys when they're coming out of the box or when, they're, or, or when they're coming from defense to offense to come with a little bit more presence than they ever have before. So the origin was really the shot clock. You know, we noticed, especially last year uh, in our Southern Conference semifinal game against High Point, we were doing a really poor job of getting guys onto the field and being able to take advantage of, of the time that we had on the shot clock. And uh, incredibly frustrating. I thought High Point did a fantastic job of, of taking away our momentum offensively by pressing out early on. And, you know, when you have three midfielders near the midfield line and it takes time to sub, all of a sudden, uh, you know, you're, you're faced with a short shot clock and, and the decisions that you're making are maybe not exactly how you drew it up in the game plan. Uh, the methods of practice, that's really what we've started to design and create this spring. Obviously, the season was cut short, but uh, the way that we look at it is, is there's three prongs. There, there's the offense, uh, offensive midfielders that have to get in on defense. So the B-52 mindset is really both ways. You know, their, their ability to bomb back in on defense and prevent transition. Uh, defensively, obviously, it's our ability to to clear, to get, uh, you know, to, to get our, the ball to our offensive personnel, but to also create a little bit of tempo and then scrambles everything in between. So those unsettled moments of substitutions where you can take advantage on the offensive side and defensively it takes great communication and, and organization to prevent the opponent from creating a little bit of opportunity. So um, those are the three prongs that we look at when we're starting to practice it. And then we'll obviously be able to share some of those drills with you that we've been able to implement that, that really try to uh, mimic each of those situations. And then what we're looking for is results. So what are we trying to focus on when we do these drills? Number one is spacing. Obviously from the clearing game right into transition, you know, our focus is can we, whether there's four guys on the field or six guys on the field, can we have great spacing to take advantage of our offensive opportunities? Our ability to be organized coming out of the box. I think sometimes we run on the field and we don't have a plan. We don't know exactly where we're headed. We don't know exactly what we're in. So the ability to be organized before you even sub onto the field so you can go full speed and you can have a, a level of purpose for when you get onto the field. And then the last one is ball flow. You know, for us, the ability to move the ball in the midst of all this happening is going to allow off ball players to find space and find opportunity. I think that too often the ball is held onto uh, as we sub and, and the pace of play starts to decrease. But if you can continue to move the ball, if you can continue to make the defense turn and, and have to defend you while off-ball movement is taking place in, in a really a chaotic time, you can take advantage of some of those scenarios. So those are going to be the, the real areas that we look at when we're watching this film that we try to identify as areas that we can build on and, and, and points of emphasis that we can make regardless of the setup that we, that we create during practice. So what we do before we do that is we want to give our guys teaching points. So positionally, we break down each guy and what we're looking for in their role. And the beauty of B-52 is it's, it's a scramble set. So uh, it's not always guys with like a line on a page. There's a lot of decisions to make. Uh, what we wanna do is just give them two or three tools, two or three talking points, so then they can really express themselves on the lacrosse field. For the attack, what we ask for them is they demand the ball and they keep the ball moving. And we find that sometimes when the ball goes down the side to our attack and we begin to sub, 
the attack will, will be comfortable just holding onto the ball, moving on their side of the field, uh, maybe reversing the ball back versus keeping the ball going in, in a different direction. And sometimes we'll take away the ability to create momentum out of the box. Our rope unit is our short stick defensive midfielders and, and our LSFs. And for those guys, what we're asking them to do is number one, be a threat to score. We have transition rules. Transition rule number one is to get covered. And that means that if nobody's in front of you, you are an offensive player. And for them off ball, it's their ability to run without it. So even if you don't have the ball, if you're not running the break, can you continue to be a threat to score, continue to have a talking head, continue to gas your cuts and create opportunities on the offensive end? For our offensive midfielders, it's really twofold. You know, obviously, if we're getting in the hole, we're going from O to D. It's their ability to swallow their pride and play defense. Uh, in B52, though, really what it was designed for was their excitement to come on the field on the offensive side of the field. So how hard they run onto the field, how much space that creates for the ball to continue to move above uh, above GLE and and sometimes just provide them opportunities to score in transition. So uh, the, the B52 mindset was really created around the offensive midfielder attitude coming onto the field. And then the last piece, obviously, is defensively. Uh, what we look like in B52 on defense, how much, how much communication that takes. Uh, you know, I think that one of the biggest challenges that teams have, especially in scramble situations, is the ability for the close defense and the goalies to communicate with offensive midfielders and provide them opportunities to sub, provide them opportunities to stay on the field and play defense, and then how we support them on defense. So those are some of the things that we look at positionally, and that's how we try to break it down. So it's a little bit more focused, regardless of the setup of the drill. Okay, so the first drill we're going to show you is our basic B52 drill. So uh, there's a lot of different varieties of ways that we set this up, but traditionally our, our, our fundamental way of setting it up is three attack, three D in. Uh, four lines in midfielders right around the 50 yard line. So of those four lines, you're going to have two lines acting as the transition players and two lines acting as the uh, offensive midfielders getting into the hole. So uh, in today's practice, this focus is going to be on our rope units so our defensive personnel playing offense. Uh, the, the personnel in uh, white, so the white midfielders getting the hole would be our O middies practicing getting in on defense and then being able to sub. So we'll go through some of these clips and just talk about what we're looking for specifically. Um, you know, obviously if you're a, you know, you're a math guy, you would count and say, coach, that's only five on five. Well, we also want to implement the added in presence of coming out of the box. So if you have two middies running in transition, you, you obviously have one midfielder that's subbed and one offensive midfielder coming out of the box. So we have one line of green, one line of white in the box two lines of green, two lines of white up by the midfield line to create that, that um, mimic that unsettled transition type scenario. So uh, we're going to just play this clip out. This is one of our defensive midfielders coming down the field uh, with presence, looking to get covered first and foremost to be a threat to score. This is an area we feel like can be really dangerous with defensive midfielders against uh, offensive midfielders, especially if you trust your guys. Uh, you know, we certainly trust this guy. We want to encourage him to be really aggressive with this much time and space. So you can see in this clip, he takes advantage. He gets to the edge of the paint, gets a pretty good look at the cage. Now, normally we would end the drill, but instead we want to walk through the process of what next steps could look like if we were getting ready to sub. So we pick up the ball off the end line. We have one LSM sub through the midfield line. All right, so now we have five on five for a little bit here. We're going to continue to play, and now we still have one offensive midfielder stuck. So we're looking to take advantage of that scenario. We get a quick dodge. We've been able to get the ball all the way through X and back. Now, right here, we force an offensive midfielder to become a slide man. We've put our defensive midfielder in a basic offensive set to be able to create opportunities for himself. And as you can see in this clip, he takes full advantage of that. Steps into the ball, in and out of his stick, and sticks it near side high. So again, just being able to build on what that next phase of B52 would look like gives us a chance to, to give our DMITI some, some responsibilities on the offensive side of the field. This is a little bit different of a scenario. Now we have an LSM coming down. Again, a lot of space. We've asked our attack to get wide and force this defenseman to make a decision. If he comes off, obviously we can step back into the ball. If he stays wide with you, and we've got the green light for our rope unit to be, be a threat to score. This is one of our sophomore LSMs, good offensive minded player. All right, we've done a good job sneaking. Now we've gassed our cuts. Now I would say this is poor motion here. We have three guys on the crease. We did not do a great job balancing the field. We sub one LSM. 
And then this is a moment for us to be able to attack. You know, we are not, we are not going to hold the ball here. We are not going to wait for us to sub on the field. We've created a little bit of confusion by creating what we call a gotcha situation. Our attackman recognizes that it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. He takes advantage. He sees the back of the defense not prepared to slide. And he gets a decent look at the cage about five yards away from the goal. We'd like to see him stand his feet here and finish this thing in front. But uh, certainly a, a good opportunity here to take advantage of uh, a little bit of an unsettled scenario. And the last one here. See, we're coming down the field. Again, our LSM, a lot of space against the offensive midfielder. One man subbing. Attacks a little bit wide here. Not reading his man. Not, not stepping into the seams to be a threat to score. But... The LSM clearly sees there's a lot of space. We're B-52. We're attacking the offensive midfielder, get to the edge of the paint, gets going downhill. He's able to get a really good look off at the cage here, and obviously something that we certainly condone, uh, especially with that much time and space. Okay, so our, our next drill here is, is clearing to B-52. So we actually start our personnel in on the defensive side. We put in uh, thud players we have five thud players and white on defense in a paint five situation we have three white midfielders three thud midfielders right across the midfield to to act as riding midfielders and then three thud white attackmen on the far side to act as thud riding attackmen so uh, in all we have 11 white defensive players in here but it's in phases so the three attack will stop riding at one level the three midfielders will stop riding right at the midfield and then it'll become a six on five so Obviously, once we do go through the process of actually clearing the ball, the offense has an advantage. So what we're focusing on now is the B-52 mindset, potentially on a six-on-five scenario. And there's no rules other than uh, get cover, transition rule number one. Number two, if nothing's there, use your attackmen, utilize them to become the quarterback, and then finish your cuts without the ball. So you can see continuing to run without the ball. The attack here on the left side of the field is doing a good job stepping into the seams recognizing that the defense is at a disadvantage, coming into the ball, in and out of a stick, really easy look there. Obviously, we're at an advantage, but the pace of play now is increased by the way that the drill is set up. Same thing here. So being able to, to mimic the clear, just so you get used to that pace of, of having to catch the ball or run by an attackman, get the ball to the midfield, now being able to take advantage. So now we're running without the ball. It becomes a six on five. We're still subbing, so it's really not a full advantage. So just reminding our guys to finish their cuts, to run without the ball, to get the ball through X, to find those passing lanes. We do a great job here. Zach Deacon finishes his cut, sits in a little pocket, one more. And I don't think we get anything out of this. You can see not great balance inside. We have four green jerseys all wanting the ball here. So just understanding when and where to cut, but um, certainly you know, increasing the pace of play a little bit more. As we, I added this clip just to give you an idea, you know, again, midfielders sometimes have to catch the ball in these pressure areas, turn to the outside, and then make a play. So I just wanted to add this clip to just see why we do this drill. We, we put them in a situation to, to be under a little bit more duress initially and then to attack. You can see our LSM does a great job crashing. I don't know how much he's ready for the ball. We want to encourage him to, to be a threat to score. We get the ball through the attack. And what's cool about this clip is the man that caught the ball initially at the midfield line, turned to the outside. He ends up the one at the end of the rainbow, finishing his cut. You can see he doesn't get too low, so he doesn't run out of real estate. He sits in that pocket, finds enough space, and takes advantage. Last one here for the clearing to B-52. You can see, again, our midfielder's forced to run by multiple bodies. Now he's in the six on five. Our LSM's acting as a threat to score on the crease. The two interior options do a great job of splitting the field, which opens up our through lane. Great job by our LSM, what we call a talking head, to attract attention of the defense. And we're able to throw the ball through. And now we have a 10-yard time and room shot in between the pipes. I believe this rings off the pipe, but gives you an, a better idea of what we're looking for and how we're able to generate some of these offensive opportunities. Then what I wanted to do was just add two or three clips of a real game footage to see what this could look like uh, in a game. So this is our last game of the season. Uh, certainly did not go our way, but two or three opportunities here that we did create opportunities against Duke because of B-52. This was obviously the best one. We clear the ball. You saw a very similar situation. You can see number 14 just comes out of the box. Normally, we would just stay here and wait to receive the ball. Instead, Jeremy buys into the B-52 mindset, sees the back of his defender, 
backdoor cuts them, not open early on. This We were actually man down in this scenario, so we only had five bodies. Jeremy knew that we gave them the free light to run without it. Evan Tyler does a great job finding a passing seam, throws it right through him, and now we have a 10-yard shot in between the pipes to be able to step in and put it away. Same thing here. We get the ball down the side. Now we get it through X. We run out of the field. Evan Tyler comes out of the box. You can see defensively, they're in the paint. They're settled. They're taking a breath here. This is when we can attack. So Evan sees an opportunity, a lane here to cut. B52 doesn't score on this, runs out of real estate, but you can see the opportunities that provide themselves. Maybe if he catches this and plants his outside foot and finishes in front, but it's still a good take. We like what we got out of it. I mean, it was a completely free take. Uh, I don't know if we want to shoot this at this point, but you can see some of the opportunities that it could provide. And then the last one, just wanted to add in a defensive one. So this is obviously a scramble situation. Ball comes out. You can see Jeremy Winston here has been coached well, says, you know what, B-52, I just got a bomb in. I don't know what's going on with the ball, but I need to do a good job of preventing transition. They do a great job. All three of our o get in. Defensively, we communicate to them, and we're able to match up and then defend again. I hope that makes sense to you guys. We love to talk about it. We love to coach it. It allows our guys to play faster. I know our attack, it, it gives them the opportunity to have their hands free maybe more than they normally do and to be able to make decisions on their own. They are our quarterback, and we have some great athletes in between the lines that we trust. And this, this, this mindset gives them an opportunity to have success on both sides of the field. So if you have any questions, there's my email. We'd love to be able to answer them. Look forward to being part of this moving forward. I know our coaches are going to be adding some film as well. Can't wait to, to be back on the field. But until then, thank you for everybody that's contributed to this. Stay safe, and hopefully we'll see you on the field soon.